I was eight years old actually when my mum and dad gave me a, uh, a Kodak box brownie. I guess it's a passion inside me. I've always had that drive to, to capture. Everywhere I go, I've always had a camera with me, you know? There's a great name associated with Miami and it's a great area to shoot. So it's my job as an artist and a photographer to showcase as much as I can through this area here and capture a mood or a feeling about the place. When you walk out of the motel or wherever you're staying here, they're going, oh, isn't it a beautiful day? Sunny skies. I'm going, oh, geez, mate. It's probably a real, not a good day for shooting. I want radical skies, sunsets and sunrise. We had a thunderstorm here yesterday, so hopefully tonight we'll come back to this location here and I'm going to take a couple of shots of some of these fences looking down through the beach. And just keep the shot simple. That's what I really enjoy to do, rather than complicate things. It'd be a simple fence into a sunrise or a sunset. You know, we can't avoid the fact that technology is moving that fast and everyone thinks digital and they get scared about it and they think manipulation and Photoshop, but no matter what shot you take, it has to get scanned anyway and that file will get printed out in different forms and different printers and different sizes and different styles. So I use Photoshop for, you know, using, getting the colours right, getting the whole shot colour balanced to what I've actually seen it to record to look like. It's not for manipulation. I'm loading up back on here, which is a 39 megapixel back, which is pretty high end. It opens up to 250 meg raw file, which means I can blow these shots up in the gallery a massively big size. I've got my own printers. So I've got a, over a uh, million dollars in the setup in our mounting, laminating. Very intricate, very delicate, and very fragile, very costly in time. It's called the silver halide process, and it's the old-fashioned film going through a chemical bath and just making sure that I get the, the best results because the piece on the wall has to make a statement. It has to be exactly how I saw it at the time because I'm never, never here to tell the story. The image is, and it has to stand on its own. I guess the whole film digital thing is a, uh, is a huge thing as far as all, all photographers are concerned. And um, look, I've, all my shots have been shot on film. I always shoot a roll of film because I like having that tangible record of what I'm shooting. But now these digital technologies are becoming so far advanced, it's something that I can't really ignore. So this, uh, the, the, this back here is 40,000 for the uh, 39 megapixel back. Lenses and body, another 20,000. And you also need a backup camera for another 60 grand. So you've got to have the, the best of the best. Now, I, I risk my life taking these photographs because nature waits for no man. I'm at these remote locations and one second to me can change the entire shot. So I'm there to capture that one second. If I don't get that, there's no point even being there. May as well pack up, go home and help mum in the kitchen. started traveling around and opening his galleries so in the last three years. I've traveled from Maui to Las Vegas to La Jolla and now Miami Beach. And uh, so far I think this is my favorite. So good! So good! We're trying to really come up with a new concept. What I think our clients have discovered is the synergy of how this looks in your home is amazing. You know, the furniture and the artwork go very well together. We've actually started designing people's living spaces because they like what they see in the galleries. The furniture that you see is uh, basically built in Fiji. This is all coconut palm wood. Very environmentally friendly. We don't use glue in the product and uh, nothing is harvested. Pete helps design the furniture as well and we exclusively sell it through the gallery. The sculpture is Shona sculpture from Africa. Shona is actually the tribe that carves the sculpture and it's handed down from generation to generation and they're all original pieces. He's uh, quite a visionary so uh, he's extremely involved in the build out of the gallery you know from the floors to the sculpture to the furniture everything that uh, that you see in the gallery what makes it the gallery is kind of his trademark. It's addictive isn't it you know what I mean and yeah you know doing photography you're always asked for the next shot the next sunrise or it's a real adrenaline rush. It's what keeps you going most of the time. You're just looking for that special moment or that mood or that feeling, you know? So, and you don't know what's, gonna, what's around the corner. When I bought a cam panoramic camera uh, over 10 years ago from a mate of mine in Alaska, that changed my vision as a photographer. So I was shooting in a panoramic format, shooting with a panoramic camera, which is a wide angle of vision. And that's how we see most photographers shoot like with a square, box, you know, or an 8x10 format, but the panoramic format gives us a really nice, nice vista, you know, and that's how we look, and also looking a little bit past the shot, you know, in a little abstract world, like looking for colour, form, and things like that. I guess that's been my trademark, is also very dealing with bright colours, I see the world as a colourful place.